when you're speaking in front of a large crowd like this, you're nervous, but it's always different with the campaign because it's like family. Yes. And so for all my distant cousins that I've never met, <laughs> my name is Catherine Jones, and um, I was 13 years old um, when I was convicted and tried as an adult mm -hmm. for murder. And at the time, me and my brother were 12 and 13, and I believe we still are the youngest um, children to ever be um, convicted and sentenced to extreme sentences for murder. So I was sent to adult prison, and I spent the first three years in solitary confinement because they could not quite figure out what to do with me. And uh, I got out when I was 30, and throughout that time, um, Unlike a lot of my brothers that didn't know whether they were coming home, but they were hoping to come home, I did have an out date. Even though in my 13 year old mind, 2017, like cars would be flying, right? Like it's 1999, <laughs> like 2000 wasn't even a reality yet. So at the beginning of my incarceration, I became a product of my environment. Um, you have a traumatized 13 year old that obviously had some trauma because a normal 13 year old doesn't think about taking another person's life. But because Columbine happened that year, nobody cared about the circumstances of what happened. All they knew was that we were the first national case of teenagers with guns and we were made the example. So, which is why at that time in 1999, it was rare for it to happen, but um, they, it, there was like a paradigm shift where as children were not children anymore, we were gonna start sentencing them um, extremely and holding them as accountable as we do adults. So um, now a traumatized and sexually abused child is being placed in a position in prison with convicted pedophiles. And um, of course guards that um, probably shouldn't be guards to begin with. And when I, by the time I was 15, I had been sexually assaulted by a guard while I was in so solitary confinement. Mm. So, and now I'm with adults and I have something to prove and I have to show that you're not gonna bully me. So then I became a fighter. Uh, I was fighting before I went to prison <laughs> and went to prison and became um, quite skilled at it. And so for my first 12 years, I was cold and hard. I didn't wanna hurt and think about what I had done. I could, didn't have the resources to deal with the remorse and the guilt for taking another person's life because at 13 it was an impulsive thing. Um, you know, brain science, we did things without really thinking about the consequences, but as I grew up, I realized the long-term consequences that her children were now brought up without a mother. Their mother had lost a child, and we did not have the mental health counseling in order to properly deal with those emotions, so I became hardened, and I did not want to deal with it. I allowed them to put me on a bunch of psychotropics, um, that I learned later should not have been combined, uh, just to deal with it. And um, probably five years, about five years before I left, I got transferred to a faith and character-based institution, and I met um, a husband and wife that came in, and they were teaching a class called Fresh Start. And by this time in my incarceration, I had just the name of that just did something for me because I wanted it. Like I knew one day I was going to go home and I didn't want to be this person that I was. I wanted to have emotions. I wanted to feel and I just wanted to be different. So I said, I'm just going to go to the class and see what it was about. And I've always been academically inclined. I was a straight A student. I got my GD. I had top scores in the entire institution. I was a certified adult teacher. Um, I was a law clerk for eight years. So academically, I excelled. That was kind of my escape. I used to read books. And so I said, I'm gonna go to this class and see if they can show me what a fresh start looks like. And they did. Not because of any specific knowledge they gave, but that they looked beyond who I was, this hardened 23-year-old at the time, 23, 24, and they'd seen my potential. And they were like, wow, she's a leader. She's a teacher. She speaks, people listen. And they cultivated my gifts they asked me a very important question that had I not learned that answer before I left, I probably would have been a statistic and been right back. They said, who are you? And I was like, hmm, who am I? And superficially, you say, oh, I'm smart, or I'm this, and I'm this. But after about the fourth or fifth answer, you gotta go deep, and it became, I'm hurt, I'm broken, I'm angry. And then after I was broken, they helped me and loved me to put those pieces back together again. 
And so I came out with a passion to help other people make that change because I realized it wasn't only incarcerated people, there were people that were incarcerated but physically free. So while we were in there, they helped me um, cultivate my gift for teaching and we created a curriculum about who you were in Christ, what your self-identity, what your self-worth, and we were working with other broken women for them to be healed. So I had this plan in my head that I was gonna go home and continue the work. And the reality of my release was so different from my fantasy. Mm -hmm. I was completely prepared. I had the education, I had the degrees, I had done the resume writing, the, the mock interviews, and I was like, I'm ready. Like, I served my time, I've done 17 years, this is my fresh brand new start, society is gonna embrace me, because I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got out and realized that society isn't as forgiving as I thought. That no matter how much they loved me in my interviews, I remember one lady saying, you're like a big ray of sunshine when you come in here. Like, and hired me on the spot and said, oh, but hold on, there's something I gotta tell you. I have a conviction, and it's for homicide. And they were like, oh, oh, well, we'll give you a call back. And I already knew what that meant. By the second or third time that happened, I knew what that meant. So I'd get in the car and I would cry for hours. And so that birthed me a desire to, for people that were gonna come home behind me to have the resources that they need in order to succeed. So they did not have to go through what I went through. If they did, they would have a support. And so I started working for Sponsors, which is a reentry program for people being released out of prison. And um, I started there through mentorship, and then I've continued to work with um, organizations and created my own organization to help people make that transition easier so that they're not um, left without a mentor, without a support system, because it wasn't my support system that I found in prison that continues to support me to this day, and they call me and they check on me, mm -hmm. the reason that I succeeded. So I want to get that opportunity and pay it forward and be that somebody that they can depend on.